How do you start a food business? How do you take that first step towards success? Today, we meet the people behind four startups that are among the most successful in the city. First off, a native son of Sambuanga who is bringing the cuisine of Mindanao to us. Then we meet a stay-at-home mom who's now baking the number one lasagna in the city. Next up, a young chef who's mastered the comfort food of several continents. And finally, his sister, who's truly elevating Philippine chocolates to world-class status. Let's Eat starts now. Dessert comes first, or in this case, chocolates come first. But really, there's no other option when you're taste testing Family Lim Singko's world-class Risa chocolates, which are all proudly 100% Filipino. I'm not exaggerating. These are truly world-class chocolates, man. And uh, whenever I go home to Canada, I bring them. You know that, right? Yes, okay. thank you. And thank you. how did this all start? I started out as a baker mm -hmm. and I realized I was baking everything with chocolate. And there was this one book that changed my life. It was uh, by Francois Payard. And he said that when you bake, you should make the best chocolate that you can use. And I was wondering, best chocolate, what did he mean by that? Okay. And that started my journey into discovering how chocolate was made. And I realized we had so much cacao here in the Philippines, but we did not have the way to process it. Into turning it into one of the best chocolates. So that's basically how it started from the bazaars. We got very good feedback and then later on when there was a, an opportunity to pursue my own business, I decided to go full-time. The cacao used for Risa chocolates are sourced from all over the Philippines. From Davao to South Cotabato, all the way to Bicol. I guess this is something we have to make clear. Do we have a lot of really good endemic chocolate plants in the Philippines? We do. We do, right? We do. Not a lot, mm. but I'm glad that there is an effort now, a conscious effort to grow them all back. Okay. But we started out, yes, with very good ones because of the Spanish galleon trade. Yeah. Now they're all over, but mm. I guess the most concentrated mm. one is still in Davao okay. because there is the local government effort to do that. What would make your chocolates truly Filipino. When we make our chocolates, there are flavors. We do take pride in the plain ones, mm -hmm. the 70% and the 60% dark chocolate. We let the cacao, the Philippine can cacao I, shine. So this one also makes us different because even with the ingredients, so with, like with this one, we spiced it up with palapa, mm -hmm. which is like What's the palapa? It's like the Philippine curry mm -hmm. in Mindanao. Okay. So it's basically it's parang... toasted coconuts. Okay. And um, with a bit of chili, we asked Chili Asylum, also a local chili maker, to make it for us. And then we put in chicken skin chicharron and pork adobo flakes. How do you find it? You know, it's a perfect start because palandarin dessert comes for style. But Opens the there are no rules, right? And we wanted to show, we created this chocolate because we wanted to show the chocolate doesn't always have to be sweet. Mm -hmm. It is semi sweet. Yeah, just but I'm getting enough. the salty. I'm getting a bit of the, the fatty. I'm it, getting the crunch. It was actually influenced by the Mexican mole. Pam now has a lot of chocolate variants. From bars to baking squares, even cookie dough. But my number one favorite, these magical pastillas de pili. That's what it's no, I feel happy right now. I'm not kidding. I'm, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I mean, I enjoy being with the two of you, but this is especially this. <laughs> No. Hindi to white chocolate per se. This is uh, this is white. Pastilles, the base is white chocolate. Pastillas de pili because we roasted the white chocolate so that it, it won't be so sweet. Because means that the white chocolate, mm -hmm. it's sugar, um, yeah, and cocoa it's butter, and milk. That's all I get, the cocoa butter, right? Mm -hmm. And it's super creamy. But this one, and here is the Willy Wonka moment when you have this. You take a bite. 
the texture is chocolate. You know you're biting a chocolate bar, but the taste, when it enters your mouth, it's all pastillas. And when it starts up, it's, it's crazy. So, how does Pam convince a farmer to plant cacao beans? Simple. She lets them enjoy the finished product. One bite of Frieza chocolates is enough to show them the potential of their cocoa crop. And all of these are 100% local grown chocolates. Yes. The reason why a lot of farmers now go into cacao is because they are realizing that it's a high value crop. We'd like to encourage more and more to, to, go, to go to chocolate farming because there really is a market not just here in the Philippines but all over the world. We have to tell the world, hey, we're more than just savory, we're more, we're more than just sisig and kare kare and the chon. We have wonderful chocolates as well. We're a complete meal. Chef Francis Lim, heavily tattooed, can look intimidating, that's for sure. But according to his cheat, Pam, he's a sweetheart and also a brilliant chef. Today, he's cooking his famous shawarma rice. Today, turo namin paano gagawin yung shawarma rice namin dito sa Tipolens Law. Gagawin natin beef shawarma rice. Meron tayo dito anato oil or achuete oil. So, lagyan natin garlic. Tapos, gisahin lang natin siya, light brown. Tapos, sinalagyan namin to ng curry powder. Tapos, lagyan na natin yung rice. Yan. Sobrang bilis lang nito. Ito actually pinakamabenta namin na dish dito sa Tepol. And tas make sure lang natin kapag mga nagpo-fried rice tayo, make sure lang natin pantay yung rice parati. Lagyan natin ng konting salt. Yan, mix lang natin mabuti. Tapos, ipat lang natin ulit sa lalagyanan. Tapos, if you enjoy shawarma rice as a wrap, ito, we serve it on rice. So, gisa tayong onions sa konting butter. Tapos iwan lang natin yan dyan hanggang sa mag-grill siya. Kaya natin konting anato oil. Konting butter. Medyo hindi siya yung traditional shawarma rice. Pero we like to put things yung alam natin masarap. Like butter, garlic. Then lagay natin yung beef. Tapos brown lang natin yung beef. Ayan. Sobrang dali lang. Tapos season lang natin siya salt and pepper. Again, tabi lang natin siya. Ayan. Ito na yung beef. It's brown na. Tapos yung onions, iwan lang natin dyan. Now, assemble na natin. So, lagay natin yung rice. Tapos, meron kaming garlic sauce. Yung garlic sauce namin, um, it's made of cream, uh, oiled um, garlic, of course, um, garlic chives, coriander, so green yung kinalalabasan niya. So we just put yung green garlic sauce. Then we add in our beef. Scatter lang natin siya. Ayan. Sama natin yung mga juices. Yung mga mahilig sa oil niya sa rice, di ba? Yung medyo malasa. So meron kami yung homemade salsa. Meron siyang tomato, red onion, cucumber. Lagay natin here on the side. Tapos, syempre, yung ginagrill natin yung onions. So, lagay lang din natin siya sa gilid. Yan. Tapos, marami lang tayong ornaments na lalagay dito. And to help then make it more appealing, mas maganda tignan and mas malasa. Yan. Tapos, one suy. Ako, naging personal favorite yung bata ako. Hit na hit ko to eh. Tapos meron tayong tinatawag na sumak, which is a uh, Middle Eastern spice. Yung sa beef natin, yung sa beef fat, dinipfry natin siya para crispy. Lagay lang natin siya. Ayan. Tapos, you just add in oil. Then, we serve it with green garlic sauce pa. There you go. Yung beef shawarma rice ng Tepolens Law. Another bestseller here is the burnt mac and cheese. It did start out that way. It was a happy accident. A pan stayed too long in the oven, but the crust, well, it turned out to be pretty spectacular. 
Paano ka naging chef? Hindi ako, like, tapt ako. Paano i-on yung gas, mm. mga ganun ba? Okay. Tapos parang uh, may apoy, may kuchilyo, may ano. Parang hindi ako interested eh. Pero naisip mo, gusto ko kumain talaga eh. Mm. So parang kapag may tinaray gawin, may tinaray gawin yung before ng house health namin, yung past dish, hindi magawa. So parang sabi ko, hey, tinuha kita. Mm. Paano ba yan? So ayun, nag-start. Pinapakita niya sa akin paano mag-isa, yeah. paano magpakulo. Tipolin's Law is a fantastic destination to enjoy a post or pre-prandial tipple, or even better, an epic meal of parquetta rice, parms and pork chops, and the salacious truffle grilled cheese. Actually, ano eh, the stuff that we put here, it's stuff that we actually like to eat every day, and we think that people can enjoy on a daily basis. What I'm seeing here is you have your everyday comfort food, which we all love, which we all grew up with, but all of a sudden, there's a little interesting detour yeah. into something that is unexpected and new, but at the same time works. Mm -hmm. What's your best seller aside from this? Um, our pizzas, actually. Yeah, I love your pizzas. Yeah. I've been actually noshing on the pizzas for a while. Yeah. It's so what makes your pizza, pizza different? Yeah, we make our own dough. Skin crust. Tapos, it's a blend of five different cheeses. Mm -hmm. um, tapos we make our own truffle paste. Uh -huh. So this is really excellent comfort food. And how would you describe the difference between NAV and running Tipple and Slaw? It's very different because um, I feel like I'm not a very well-traveled person. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm just like I get to get to travel mm -hmm. and go on adventures. And I feel like when I cook, mm -hmm. different cuisines. So I feel like I get to travel when I cook. That's how I get to fulfill that part of me, that purpose that I've always wanted to do or become. Can you describe this dish? This is our uh, s'mores ice cream sami or ice cream sandwich. Mm -hmm. It's actually using her chocolates, her baking chocolates. Thank you for using my chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> so there. Because I consider her actually as my first mentor. Because she was the one who enlightened me. Ano, you know, parang, hey, ganyan pa pala pagkain. And Dato now? Kasi tingin ko lang sa pagkain. Kasi kain lang ako parang mabusog. <laughs> I love this. Yeah. Pero ngayon, I learned from love. him. Yeah. I learned from him. Respect. So, sige, now I will... Learn from both of you. <laughs> <laughs> I will learn to love this. I've been thinking about it, I've been thinking Okay, so I will end with this. I'll just take a bite and tell all of you jealous people out there how, how good this tastes. So there's ice cream here. Spoon? Uh, and there's marshmallows. Uh, oh, there, yeah, I, I got Better it. Better with a spoon. So there's marshmallows, there's uh, graham crackers, and... Uh, like it. I'm speechless. Pam and Francis, brother and sister, are elevating Pinoy products and Pinoy cooking to new heights. There is no sibling rivalry here. Instead, theirs is a loving example of sibling revelry.